Hey lovelies, if you are pasta lovers like I am, then today you have come to the right place. As you know, all month long I'm sharing easy weeknight dinner ideas and today it is all about three amazing pasta dishes. Starting with my new all-time favorite, this amazing orecchietti served with chicken meatballs. For this recipe, we're gonna get started by mixing up our meatballs. The great part is you could do this during your Sunday meal prep if you wanted to, and then just cook everything come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, whenever you're ready to eat. Now, I'm using ground chicken in this recipe. You could use some ground turkey or some ground beef if you wanted to switch things up. And I'm just gonna start with some Italian-style breadcrumbs. I'm also going to be using one egg in this recipe. I've got some freshly grated Parmesan headed in here, as well as some freshly chopped parsley, which adds a ton of great fresh flavor. And then I'm also going to be grating in one clove of garlic. It's always a good idea to grate your garlic in a recipe like this so that no one gets a big chunk of garlic in their meatball. We're gonna hit this really generously with some salt and of course some pepper. Where there is salt, there is almost always pepper in my kitchen. And then give it all a good mix until everything is well combined. To form my meatballs, I'm actually going to be using this amazing cookie scoop. That's going to keep them nice and even and help them cook more evenly, which of course I love. Once your meatballs are prepared, it's time to get them to the stove. Now, as you can see, I'm using a large flat bottom skillet for this job because I'm going to be cooking a lot of meatballs at once and I don't want them to be overcrowded. I'll start by heating up a good amount of oil in my pan because I don't want these sticking and then I'll transfer my meatballs into the pan. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, when it comes to cooking meat like this, you don't want to disturb it until it releases easily from the pan. That's how you know it's ready to flip. Otherwise, your meatballs will start to fall apart. That's the kind of color we are going for. It's looking great. Then I'll cook them for another two to three minutes before adding my tomatoes to my pan and some chicken broth to that. Now the best part about this recipe is that those tomatoes and that chicken broth are going to cook up together to become the sauce for our pasta. But they're also going to help our meatballs stay nice and moist while they finish cooking. What's not to love? I like to pop a lid on this for the first five minutes or so of cooking. That helps trap the heat and lets our meatballs cook through. And then I'll remove the lid and let this cook up for another five minutes while that sauce reduces a little bit. At that point, we can check our meatballs to make sure they are fully cooked. We want them to reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that's happened, we can add our cooked pasta straight into the pot and give everything a good stir. If you're finding things are a little dry, I recommend adding a little bit of your pasta water into the pot as well. That adds a little bit of additional moisture. I'll hit this with some salt and some pepper, give it a good stir, and once it's all mixed up, my final step will be melting a little bit of cheese on this. To do that, I'm actually going to be using these mini bocconcini balls. Bocconcini is actually just fresh mozzarella cheese. I just like to pop the lid back on my skillet. And in mere minutes, what you have is a delicious masterpiece full of ooey gooey cheese, a great tasty tomato sauce, and those awesome meatballs. I like topping this off with just a bit of Italian seasoning and then adding some fresh basil to it. The entire team agreed that these meatballs were some of the best they have ever tasted. Trust me when I tell you, this dish is a total winner. Next, for something even simpler but equally delicious, we are making this amazing garlic oil and broccolini pasta. And of course, it all starts by making some garlic oil. So once again, I've got a nice big skillet heating up on the stove, and to that I'm going to add a good helping of olive oil. You wanna make sure you're adding enough olive oil here because we're going to be infusing it with amazing garlic flavor, and it's essentially going to become the sauce for our pasta. So a great way to know when your oil is heated up is when you see it sort of form bubbles next to your spoon, that's how you know it is nice and hot. Great little trick without having to put your finger in there. I wouldn't recommend that, that actually would hurt a lot. At this point, we are going to add some garlic cloves to this. As you can see, I've got whole garlic cloves. I've just given them a quick smash, and I'm going to get them into that oil with some red pepper flakes, and I'll let those hang out for between one and two minutes. That's really all it takes for that oil to become infused with that amazing garlic flavor. And then we can remove our garlic from the pan and get to work on sauteing our broccolini. 
I wanna give it a two to three minute head start just to help it soften up a little bit. And then it's time to add our pasta to this pot. Now I'm using some cooked rotini here. Any type of pasta will do. It's just really important that you reserve one cup of the cooking water because we're also going to be adding that into the pot. And the starch from that pasta water is going to help add a little more moisture to this dish as well as some richness. We're just gonna let all of this cook up for another two to three minutes until the pasta water evaporates. And our final step will be stirring in our Parmesan cheese. At this point, we just need to finish it off with a little salt and some pepper, and it is ready to be devoured. And guys, what you have is this amazing, simple, but sophisticated dinner that, while so easy to make, is really, really heavy on flavor. I promise you, it will not last long. Finally guys, for something a little different today, I am making what we're calling an orzotto. It's essentially a risotto, but instead of rice, we are making it with orzo pasta. And trust me, it is going to be real good. This recipe starts by cooking up some pancetta, once again, in a nice large skillet. Pancetta is essentially Italian bacon. If you can't find it at your supermarket, not to worry, you can use regular bacon in this recipe or even some chopped ham. You wanna cook your pancetta until it's a bit crispy on the edges. That's how you get the best texture from it. And then once it's fully cooked, we'll just transfer it over to a bowl and get to work on the rest of our yummy dish. The good news is the pancetta has released a lot of its oil, so that's what we're going to use to fry up our onion. Once our onion has softened up a little bit, we can go ahead and add our orzo to the pan. I'll toss that for a minute or so, and when you see it become nice and shiny, you know it's time to add your white wine to the pan. Now, if you don't wanna use white wine in this recipe, you definitely don't have to. You could use a little more chicken broth instead, but the white wine really does add a ton of great flavor. I like cooking up my orzo in that white wine for two to three minutes before adding my chicken broth to this. Now, in a traditional risotto, you would usually add your chicken broth a little at a time and let it absorb at each step, but come on, who has time for that on a busy weeknight? We'll let that chicken broth come to a simmer and then we're going to let this cook away for between 12 and 14 minutes or until that orzo is nice and tender. It's really important when you're making a one pot pasta like this to keep it moving. You wanna stir it every two to three minutes to prevent it from sticking. But you'll see, slowly but surely, you'll end up with this really creamy pasta dish and all of that liquid will have been absorbed. Then it's time to finish this off by adding our pancetta back into the skillet. I'm also adding some green peas to this. I like hitting this with a splash of cream for some richness, some freshly grated Parmesan for even more wonderful flavor. Another great finisher in a dish like this is lemon zest. I know it might sound a little odd, but with all of these amazing savory flavors, it's nice to get just a hit of freshness at the end of cooking. Little salt, little pepper, a good stir, and this stuff is ready to be devoured. Trust me, you won't believe how much flavor is in every spoonful. Who would complain about having this for dinner? I hope you'll give all three of these delicious pasta dishes a try. And if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because you guys know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all of these tasty recipes are linked in the description box below, so you can find them there. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.